Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. So a few days ago, I posted a question on my community page asking you guys if you wanted a video on how to use UShip specifically. And most of you guys said yes. So I am going to do that. I did a video on how to sell furniture on Etsy and I briefly mentioned UShip in there but uh, this video is gonna delve in more to the actual shipping process and how to incorporate UShip into your prices, into your shipping habits, into everything. So yeah. First off, I wanna start by saying that Etsy is a great way to promote yourself. Even if you're not listing things that you actually have available, you can put sold in the name of it and just have the listing on there for people to see examples of your work. I have gotten so many requests to remake similar items that are on my Etsy page and I've gotten a lot of commissioned work based off of my Etsy page alone. That's where I get the majority of my commissioned work. So I cannot recommend listing on Etsy enough. It is so, so, so helpful. Anyways, moving on to UShip. UShip is a service where you basically put your furniture listing on UShip for the requested price that you would like to ship it for, and then someone contacts you to offer their services. So that way your listing is up there and you say where you want it to go and that way the person can kind of coordinate it into their schedule because oftentimes these guys have, you know, big trucks and they're hauling a bunch of stuff at once. So your package is either getting them back to the where they were going or is going to where they're headed along with a bunch of other items. And it's a really cool service because you can actually go and look at the profile of the person submitting to ship your piece and you can check out their ratings, what they drive, uh, what they use to package everything, and you can see how many deliveries they've actually done. So when you go on to UShip, you can create an account and they actually have an app for it for iPhones and Androids and all that good stuff. And um, once you create an account, you can go and you can get a free estimate. It's really cool. It has you put like, all the descriptions about your piece, what kind of piece it is, how much it weighs, all that good stuff. And then once you're done with that, you can see an estimate of what people pay, like an average price. So this app is extremely user-friendly. It has you put in all of the measurements as well as the type of furniture that you will be selling. And then the length and the width are kind of confusing to me, but they put a little graph here so you can see how they measure their pieces. So you wanna go ahead and put those measurements in and then it'll have you put in the weight. And I actually don't have a scale to weigh my pieces. I don't know how they expect you to know the weight. So you just wanna estimate a relative weight that's close to what you're looking for. And yeah, I've never ever ever had a person weigh my item at pickup. And then for the city, you wanna put in the city that they're of course gonna be picking up the piece from. For me, for this part, I put in the furthest city possible. So I live in Atlanta. Atlanta, so I'm going to be putting in Seattle since it's, you know, kind of further away. And then this will come up with a price average. And remember, this is all averages. So you want to really take that into account. It shows you the highest amount that someone has paid. And this, I believe, includes like higher shipping costs as far as packaging. So if you want your furniture piece to be shipped with more than just a blanket wrapped around it, that adds on to the cost. And then it also gives you the lowest cost that um, someone has paid for it, as well as the average paid. So after you get that estimate, it will have a place at the bottom where you can click and create a listing for that piece. And when you do that, I prefer to adjust my price. So instead of going for what people usually pay, I like to list it, you know, a little bit below that and see if I can list it. But when you're incorporating it into your price, you do want to be prepared for the average listing price because you know that's what most people pay so you want to be prepared for that so when it comes to including the price of shipping into the cost of the piece on etsy you want to go with the average listing and then also when you're doing this 
obviously you have no idea before you list your piece on Etsy, you don't know where it's gonna go. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. So say I'm shipping to Seattle because it's kind of on opposite ends or no, it would be like that for you guys, right? I'm trying to accommodate for camera flipping. Um, anyways, one end of the country, the other end of the country, right? So that's what I kind of try to do when it comes to shipping. I like to compensate for the fact that I may be shipping the furthest away possible. So that way, even if I do ship to the furthest city, I will still be compensated for all of that shipping price. So say, you know, you live in Texas, you either want to put in the city for Maine or for Washington. Either one is probably going to give you the same thing, but you can look to see if it's any different and then put the average price and then add that on top of your Etsy listing. So obviously you're gonna have your main price, what you wanna profit, and then make sure to always compensate for the percentage that Etsy does take out of your sales. And then on top of all of that, you wanna put the additional shipping cost and incorporate that into your listing. When it comes to someone accepting your shipment, you have the listing price that you offered it at. So say I want to ship a dresser for 250, that's my listing. So someone will come back and they'll either accept my offer of 250 or they'll come back saying, oh, I can do it for 300. And there is some bargaining and negotiation going on in those talks. You can negotiate maybe 275 or whatever the case may be, but it's whatever you're comfortable with paying. As I said, you want to prepare for the most expensive shipping possible, but you want to negotiate affordable shipping. Say the lowest price is like 150 and then the maximum price is like 550, but then the medium price is 300. You want to list it on Etsy as if it was going to ship for that $300. But when it comes to what you listed on, on you ship, you want to go for something that's in between the least amount and the medium amount, or you can go with the least amount and just anticipate that people are going to want to negotiate a little bit with that price. So if I list it on you ship for 150, someone will probably come back and try to get closer to that 300. And that's where the negotiating comes in. When it comes to negotiating, you wanna be understanding because you know the drivers also deal with gas prices, raising, fluctuating, all that good stuff. So sometimes a dresser might be more expensive to ship than other times, you know? It just depends on gas prices and what the drivers think their time is worth at the time. Like driving during a pandemic probably is more risky, so they might charge a little bit more right now. Gas prices are also kind of up right now, so, you know, the price in general might be higher for shipping. So you also want to be considerate and just always thinking about that as well. But like with anything, there is always room for negotiation. So if someone does come at you with an offer of 300, try to negotiate with them. Try to say, okay, so I offered 150, you offered 300, let's meet in the middle and say, you know, 235 type of thing, you know? And there are times where you will have multiple bids on your piece and that's where your decision comes in as far as ratings, uh, how many pieces they've delivered, how communicative they are, where their price is at, and then that's how you decide. And sometimes it might be worth to go with someone with a higher rating, even if they are listing it for a higher price. If, you know, someone has a five star rating and then the other person has, you know, a 3.5 or a four star rating, you might want to look at those reviews and just compare and see. And even if the person with a higher rating is more expensive, that might be worth it. I like to go with the average price just because it seems a little bit more reasonable and more realistic. I've never had a shipment posted more than a week without being accepted, but you do want to anticipate that week just in case and let your client know that that is going to be um, something to work with. 
And then also you want to put in your free shipping description on Etsy, if you do list free shipping, that is. In your shipping at, in general, you want to list that it takes about seven to 10 business days to ship or whatever the case may be, whatever you're comfortable with saying. But you want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer just to make sure that you do get someone that accepts your shipment in time. So when it comes to shipping, you can either pre-package it yourself like, you know, do bubble wrap, do a, a packing blanket or whatever it is that you feel safe with. But Uship does come with an option to have them blanket wrap the piece. And so you always wanna click that. Otherwise there is an extra charge for any additional packaging or shipping products that you do want them to use on the piece. But in my experience, honestly, the blanket wrapping has been enough. What they usually do is they wrap it in saran wrap and then um, that'll keep like all the drawers from, you know, coming out. And then they put a uh, packaging blanket over it or a shipping blanket. And then they strap it down, make sure it's all nice and snug and isn't going anywhere. And I haven't had any bad experiences with that at all. In my last shipping experience, the guy actually told me that um, sometimes the paint will come off depending on how humid it is inside the truck and everything like that. And he said that the best way to protect against that happening is to make sure that your piece has enough drying time before you ship it. So I let my piece dry for probably about, you know, two weeks before I ended up shipping it just to be safe. And I mean, your client, probably will understand. I mean, unless they're in a rush to get the piece, but usually when it comes to commissioned pieces, they're not in a rush. They're pretty patient and understanding. And especially when it comes to protecting the piece, they will understand. You probably don't have to wait two weeks in order to ship it. That just happened to be the schedule that my client was on and it happened to not ship for two weeks but i do recommend at least a couple days of drying time before you ship it because as i said they do wrap it in saran wrap most of them and you know you wouldn't want your paint to get damaged before it even gets to your client and a really cool feature that i love about you ship is that it doesn't release your payment to the driver until you release it. So it's at your discretion to pay the delivery person. So you get to make sure that it was delivered safely in the proper, you know, state. And in my experience, the people are really good about getting back to you as far as when they're going to pick it up, when they're dropping it off, when it was dropped off, and they always send you a picture of it either at the door or in the place where they delivered it. And so once they send you all that information and you feel comfortable and safe enough to actually give them the payment, then you release the payment and you're good to go. And it, you know, it's a give and take because they trust that you'll pay it because if not, you'll get a bad review from them and then not be able to use Uship or not have anybody want to work with you and all that sort of stuff. So there's reviews on both sides to kind of guarantee the reliability of both parties, which I really appreciate. With an app like this, you know, it's up in the air, you know, you don't really know what you're gonna get, but with the review system and you can see how many deliveries they make, it makes it so, so easy and so comfortable and just simple. And if you're doing commissioned pieces for people that are across the country, like I have been doing recently, people don't even buy my stuff off of Etsy really because it sells so fast, like over Facebook marketplace and all that sort of stuff. So people rarely buy my pieces actually on Etsy. I've only had one piece that has sold through Etsy. Other than that, I get messages on Etsy for commissioned pieces. And when it comes to that, you know, of course your pricing is your own. It's your own choice on how much you want to charge and what you're charging for your time and all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to shipping, you can kind of give them an estimate with you ship. You can ask what dimensions they need, what kind of piece they're looking for, and then tell them right, you know, straight up front, this is approximately what it's going to be for shipping. And then if they're okay with everything, then you're good to go. Honestly, the only bummer about you ship is that you can't really use the same delivery guy more than once. <laughs> Because, you know, unless you're shipping to the exact same city, which, you know, does definitely happen, but they have their own schedule that they're running on that 
oftentimes doesn't fit yours and or are going to a different city all that sort of stuff but um <laughs> You know, you, you get to like the person that you're working with. I've worked with several guys that I really, really enjoyed and that were so nice and helpful and communicative and I just really appreciated their service. And of course I gave raving reviews, but you know, I, I wanna give them my business because they were so great, but I can't do it anymore because of all those things I just mentioned. So that honestly is, the only bummer about you ship but it's not even really a bad thing because you're using it for what it's meant for and you're getting great service out of it so honestly can't recommend it enough i am not sponsored by them i am not getting paid by them whatsoever i genuinely just think that it is a great idea and an awesome service to use. Please like and share if you found this video at all useful. I'd be happy to make more videos teaching you guys how I use Etsy and how I get commissioned work. But yeah, if you guys have any questions or want me to make any videos about anything, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do that for you guys. And yeah, stay flipping guys. Mwah.